on the computer. I am very spoiled. I have had TK this week, and now on Taco Tuesday, I'm so I'm talking to Selzy. I mean, this is going to be one of the funniest weeks of my life. So don't don't let me down. You've got a very stepbrothers looking picture behind you, Dominic. I got to say it's, I mean it's a beautiful picture, but it is very. You remember that stepbrothers movie? So my my brother and I redid that picture. Um, I'm trying to remember where the hell we were at, but we redid that picture somewhere. And I've got it somewhere. I just don't know exactly off the top of my head where it's at. But yeah, he's I'm I'm like the the little spoon. He's the big spoon, and it almost looks like a maternity photo. It's pretty funny, <laughs> mate. You have let's before we talk any further about the Peter Murphy classic, which is what we are getting together about. Man, you got a beautiful family. It's incredible to think I've got a picture of uh, my little Connor bear. You know, taking it in the pits at Warrnambool. God, it's got to be six or seven years ago when your life was nothing like it is now, but you've got a beautiful family, mate. Thank you. Yeah, it's life's changed a lot since 2020. And, uh, you know, I've got two young girls and married and got a beautiful home, two dogs running around. It's, it's, um, it's been such a whirlwind the last, I would say, you know, three, four years. It's just been wild. So um, I wouldn't change it for the world. I um, mean, you know, obviously, I'm not racing as much as I used to, but. Um, you know, still beating up and down the road on the West Coast for the most part. And, um, you know, now I'm kind of a working man, you know, working Monday through Friday most days. And um, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. I, I love the life I'm living. And um, I definitely have a lot of fun with my kids, my dogs and, you know, going and racing on the weekend. You uh, a couple of seasons ago had a phenomenal season. Like what is your best season? Because I remember one where you just kicked everybody's ass from one end of the state to the other. Yeah, um, I would definitely have to say 2021. We, uh, you know, we, we had come off of 2020 and uh, we had an up and down year. You know, we, we had speed at times. We struggled at times, but it was our first year, uh, you know, working together, Jimmy Carr and I. And, um, you know, 2021 rolls around and, and it's the first year that I had stayed home full time since like 2015. So, you know, there was definitely expectations. Like we were going for an art championship. We wanted to, you know, try and, you know, win 10 races, which is something that I hadn't done. Um, you know, in one season. And I think by the end of March, we had six wins and uh, we swept like two or three weekends, like through February and March. And, you know, April comes around, we ran really well. And then I, I would say, you know, of everything that we accomplished that year, I believe we won uh, the Johnny Key, we won the Dave Bradway, we won the Dirt Cup, uh, you know, so a lot of really big races on the West Coast. But the biggest one to me was the Peter Murphy Classic. And uh, you know, we rolled in Friday night and, you know, obviously tough crowd for that event. And we won the 360 and the 410 portions and then rolled over to Tulare, which I believe was the last year the finale was in Tulare and, um, you know, rocked up, won the 360 portion and then won the 410 portion. And and with the 410, we were quick time in hot laps, quick time in qualifying, fourth to first in the heat race, won the pole shuffle and won the main event. So truly an incredible weekend, won four races in two nights and something that, you know, I don't know if it's happened before, but you know, it definitely hasn't happened yet. Uh, you know, since then, Corey got close with three for four a few years ago. But um, yeah, the Peter Murphy's been great for me, and and that was definitely my best year. I think we ended up winning twenty three events that year out of like fifty two entered. So we had almost won half the races we ran. Wow, that that percentage strike rate is phenomenal. It was crazy, and and what's wild is we ran second. I want to say eighteen times that year. So we were out of the top 10 three nights and all three were two of them were um, mechanical failures. And one of them was a DNF just getting caught up in a, a bad situation, but everything else we were in the top 10, like the stats that year were just unbelievable. It was ridiculous, man. You've sucked since then. No shit. No kidding. That's what we always say. Like, you know, every year since then we've won, I think 22, we won 11 races and last year we won 13 and we both looked at the seasons like, meh you know not even close so they were almost disappointing but you know I, we, it's been a great run these last three three four years have been amazing they've been the best of my career and um you know we've had national success we've had regional success and um yeah i'm pretty happy you um your career along with geos has been incredible uh, and the californian strength of californian racing in particular the profile of it Seems to, you know, since Brad Sweet, since Geo, since some guy called Larson, you know, uh, go back to Jason Johnson as well on an outlaw perspective. It's quite phenomenal how much California racing in the last 
probably five years has just escalated. Is is that an unfair comment? No, I, I mean, uh, I, I remember like, like so Rico and uh, Brad and Larson were, I would almost say the generation before. And that was when like TK was winning a bunch of races all across the country. Yeah. And, you know, then it, there was a lull because there was a bunch of young guys and all the good guys were leaving. So like Kyle got good and then he leaves and Rico gets good and then he leaves. And, you know, Brad starts getting good and he leaves. And there was a big lull, I would say, from, I don't know, probably 2000. 12 to now but like if you look at a weekly show in in california you get tim kating you get bud kating two of the most successful sprint car drivers the west coast has ever seen across the country not just in california and then you've got you know guys like justin sanders shane golubic tanner carrick who's had success at the chili bowl um cory day obviously now he's kind of gone but um you know you, you throw in all these amazing guys sean becker um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Kyle Hurst, you know, he's been retired for three years, <laughs> thankfully, because he would have cut into everyone's win percentage. So um, just some incredibly talented guys out here, good teams. And the bull ring racing makes it full contact a lot of times and really exciting. And tempers sometimes are high and emotions get high sometimes. And, uh, you know, it, the gloves are off every night when you're racing in California, whether it's 1500 bucks to win or, you know, 62,000 to win up at the dirt cup. And, uh, you know, un unlike anywhere else in the sprint car world, you know, not Australia, not Pennsylvania, not anywhere is when you roll into a local 360 race, you're running the same guys that you are at the biggest races in California. All the best guys go to all the same places. So, um, there are no easy wins and there are no, uh, you know, there's no cherry picking that goes on, on the West coast because 99% of the races, you have all the hitters. You count Skagit as West Coast, of course. It's not California, but man, isn't now Kevin Redeen has Blake Anderson as well with Peter Murphy. Man, that place is just rocking. You just even if you take the amount of prize money to win off the table, gosh, Kevin Redeen is just a game changer. And talk about the Redeen team as a Cal as a West Coast team as well as you know the actual driving concept. Absolutely. Well, I mean, what Kevin's done basically is he's injected a bunch of money that, you know, really we should have been racing for a long time ago. And now he's gone and done that and stepped up and made huge facility improvements in Skagit. And, and what that's done is that's made the West coast a lot smaller. And what I mean by that is guys would say, ah, Skagit's 13 hours, 14 hours. We're not going, you know, we may go up to dirt cup. Well, shit over the last three years, I, I roll up to dirt cup. We run the summer nationals. We, you know, we come to the outlaw shows and a lot of guys go with us. So um, it's really shortened up that travel because of the money that's been injected there. And and we're seeing a revival in Oregon. You know, Oregon Speed Week has been thriving now, 410s and 360s. Right. There's a lot of really good things going on, um, you know, on the West Coast. Uh, I hope something can happen in Arizona. You know, right now the, the sprint car racing in Arizona is kind of, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to say weak, but it's kind of weak. Um, so hopefully that can kind of get rejuvenated as well eventually and uh, – you know, then you can have from Arizona, which is not on the coast, but it's still very Western Arizona, all the way up to Washington, you could have pretty strong, successful car counts and events. And, um, you know, the more money that gets injected into the West coast, the smaller it gets. Cause guys don't really care if they're traveling 10 hours, if they're racing for a good purse. That's a really good, um, really good point that you, the, the idea of California getting smaller. Also, Arizona is a good conduit for the guys from the central you know, to at least come through and then be able to race, race back through. And man, when you think about, you know, Manzanita, you know, like what a yep. legendary, some of those races were Leland and Schumann and those guys and the non-wing deals like far out. That's oh. legendary. Yeah, they're absolutely incredible. I mean, there's some beautiful racetracks down there and, you know, we've lost some over the years, but I mean, still with Kokopaw, um, I, I mean, I think Kokopaw and, uh, Central Arizona Speedway might be the only two left, but both have so much potential and, uh, you know, really, truly amazing racetracks when they get them right. And, uh, you know, hopefully that it can kind of get a resurgence. There's a lot of guys down there that want to race, just, you know, they've kind of had schedule problems and weather comes at weird times and, uh, you know, really hope that Arizona can get going again. Cause really, I mean, nothing's going on on the West coast or the East coast in the winter. If you could see a revival of some of the, big you know winter programs that they used to have down there throughout the years i mean that that would keep a lot of guys home instead of going to australia in the winter 
Uh, I get a lot to do with IMCA these days with the Super Nationals in Boone, which is uh, it's like Walmart outdoors. Uh, it is phenomenal. <laughs> to, like, it's such a great vibe, mate. It's the last of the non-political correct bullshit, you know, events, you know, on the planet. And IMCA is really strong with down in Kokopara. Have you ever driven a stock car? Because, Dom, you, you strike me as you could roll down in like a – Talladega night style race suit, Ricky Bobby, it have that left front. I could see you doing it. So my, my love is sprint car racing, wing sprint car racing above anything else. But I am probably the biggest late model guy in the world. Like hmm. I love watching the late models. I, I just, I, I think it's so cool. Like that kind of racing. And a lot of those guys style is more me. Like, Hey, you want to drink? You want to fight? Like, what do you want to do? Like, let's First do it. Whatever, you know, and yep. exactly. We're, we're, and we're not going to hold any grudges after. So, um, I just, I like that world. Um, you know, unfortunately in California, there is no late models. Like they don't exist on the West coast, but, um, you know, I always think of another life where maybe I grew up in Alabama or I grew up in, uh, you know, Illinois or somewhere. And, and I was a late model guy and, you know, maybe, I don't know, who knows if, if Scott Bloomquist has a, has a, a, you know, a, a heir to his throne, but maybe I would be Scott Bloomquist's go-to guy in, in another life. But, um, yeah, no, I love late model stuff. It's super cool. And, uh, I feel like a lot of those guys are a lot like me. They're just uh, pretty much, you know, say how it is and see it a as what it really is. And, uh, you know, they don't they don't pull any punches. Davenport two years ago won over two million dollars in one in one season. And he won the late model Knoxville Nationals. And I got to interview him afterwards and I roll back afterwards. He's parked the, the car up and he's ro he's got a fat boy. I mean, the thing is that like, like George Burns would have gone. No, nah, man, that's too hardcore. He, he at that point he won one point eight five million dollars. So the late model, it's it's weird to me, Dom, that if you're a sprint car guy, you're not necessarily a late model guy, and if you're a late model guy, you're not necessarily a sprint car guy, which kind of surprises me because I love the technology of those things. I love the way the rear ends kind of walk on them, and that's they're such a cool looking thing. But there's not a lot of crossover in our fan base. No, and and it's super weird because I think um, you know dirt track fans in general they. I've noticed they seem to find a niche and they stick with it. Like yeah. a lot of modified fans like modifieds, a lot of late model fans like late model sprint car fans like sprint cars. Um, but boy, we got a lot to offer. And like the Boone Nationals is a hell of an event. Um, the World 100 is super cool. Yeah. Um, but shit, I mean, those late model guys, they, they'll roll in on a Tuesday and they'll race for 50 grand. And it's like, yep, another day at the office. So um, <laughs> I think with what, with what Kyle and Brad are doing and what the World of Outlaws are doing, I think that's the direction they're all going and working towards, which is great, especially for guys like me, because, you know, I'm not a full-time racer. I'm not a professional. So, um, you know, my hobby is going and racing with some really good guys. And, and that's, that's awesome that I get to race for a little bit more money. $11,000 to win on Saturday. God forbid the weather uh, looks after us for Murph's race. Um, can you tell me from a Californian perspective, how much people love our Murph? Our Murph, he's on loan to you, by the way. He might have married a, a Californian goddess, but that's not the point. Um, he's loved in three corners of the world, Dom. New Zealand, Australia, and, and America. Why is he so popular in California? You know, he's just a special person. Uh, he's, um, I don't honestly don't even have the words. Like, he's just a special person. He's the only reason I'm, we're, you and I are talking right now. Um, you know, he, yeah. he's the only reason I'm still driving a sprint car. I mean, if it wasn't for him, there, there wouldn't be anything to talk to me about because I would have quit a long time ago. You know, he was the biggest factor in me continuing to, you know, push through when I was a young kid and really struggling trying to find my footing in the sport. And, um, you know, just he was my first job outside of our family business and uh, worked for him, you know, in the early mornings at, for a half day, but, you know, right when I had moved out of my parents' house and got an apartment at 18 years old. So, um, Pete's just a special guy. Uh, you know, not a lot of people don't even know this, but I believe it was the first Peter Murphy in 2000 or 2015. Um, I, I broke my back at the event and, oh. uh, that was that year. Peter was actually crew chiefing for me. And that was the first year he had the Peter Murphy classic. And I broke my back at the event. I was leading the narc points and, uh, it was a hard road back after that. You know, I had to, you know, really push hard to, you know, fight through a lot of pain and a lot of, uh, um, you know, mental and physical yeah. tough times. And, um, you know, you fast forward to 2019, I'm driving the 83 car and had a hell of a battle with Rico Abreu and 
beat Rico late in the race and win the 360 portion of the Peter Murphy Classic. And uh, there's a picture of Peter and I up on the wing, which is a very special moment for us. And then obviously 2020 canceled the event. And then we come back to 2021, we win all four. And then 2022, we win both 410 portions. And then 2023, we win the 410 finale. So the last three years, we've won the 410 finale, which to me is the Peter Murphy Classic. And then, you know, I won the 19 and 2021 360 portions. Uh, so I got a lot of P Peter Murphy trophies in my shop, I'm more than anybody else. And, you know, I'm the only person that's won the event twice, which is really cool. And um, only person that's won it three times for sure. So that's really cool. And this year I'm actually driving a car that, uh, you know, Peter, he kind of got his footing in California in the United States in, which is, is the zero car. Actually, I'm probably going to be in the okay. Correct. But, um, yeah. I'm a teammates with Tim Kading, who's one of my all-time childhood heroes and one of my very good friends who I absolutely adore. And I'm going to be driving a car that, uh, you know, Peter had a lot of success in, won his first NARC event in. And, um, you know, on top of all that, I've got Jimmy Carr on the wrenches, who drove the zero car. And um, it, it's exciting. You know, when you get stuff like this put together, it, it's, it's, uh, it's really neat. It's fun. Um, you know, I, I ran the zero car twice in 2020. And led late until a couple laps to go and got passed at the Maury Williams, uh, the Memorial, the first race. Wow. And the next one, we started 11th, and we ended up winning it. So Kyle Hurst and I, both in the zero cars, won it. And um, TK and I already have a plan. If we uh, if we can go one, two in this thing, we're going to we're gonna sumo wrestle right there on the front straightaway, and, and Peter's going to be the jelly in the sandwich. Please, not in a thong. <laughs> I, um, you know, uh, we, we talked about all those great Californian, you know, exciting names that are changing the game now. Another one of Pete's great friends that we didn't mention just because there's so many is Carson Macedo. Like, like, holy cow, that guy is like top three or four World of Outlaws spec. And I remember Murph was heavily involved in getting him into Australia to begin with down there as well. This race has a pole shuffle, Dom. Americans don't see pole shuffles very much. It's a staple diet down here in Australia. There's not much cooler than getting after it. You can run from eighth to pole. You'll never do that in a dash, but in a pole shuffle, that's a chance. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I, the first time I ever saw pole shuffles was at the Peter Murphy Classic, or actually competed in one. And then when I went down to Australia, that was the common the common thing. You know, down there in Perth and, and yeah. Sydney at the time, and um, you know, it, it, it it's awesome. I love it. It's drag racing, but with four corners and. Um, it's a dog fight. It's one on one, so you race a lot differently than you would if it was a pack of cars or a field of cars. And it's two laps. It's do or die, and it's cutthroat. And I love that. And I think that's what a, another aspect of this race that you know people love to watch and love to see. And um, you know, for me last year, I don't even remember how how deep I was, but we had to get past McFadden and Kofoid and uh, I think Golubek as well to to win the pole shuffle. And it was like. I mean, people were standing up, cheering and screaming, and, and that just gets your blood pumping. I mean, it's so cool to um, you do something like that. And Hanford's been really good to me over the years. It's the closest racetrack to my house, and uh, this is probably the most sentimental race for me that I race all year. So, um, you know, we're, we're the only reason we're there is to win. You know, anything less is a failure, and uh, we're coming there with our guns loaded, and, and we're ready to uh, we're ready to fight. Pretty stout field too, mate. Just looking through some of the the lineup for the cars, and as you said, uh, you know TK and yourself in the in the Katie Williams, Maury Williams. I hear the cookies are pretty good. I didn't want to ask TK what kind of cookies he eats. They're probably different to what you do. Um, <laughs> but a, a stout lineup. I remember my first uh, Peter Murphy Classic. I got a, got to go over and do what Stu McCarthy's been doing the last couple of years, and just being in the infield and. Under a red, we had a long stoppage, and I actually crouched down next to Tyler Walker and talked to him about life on the PA. And he, he went to some really deep places and was like, I love that about our sport, Dom. I love that we can occasionally break down all the BS and bullshit about who loves who and who doesn't and who's, who's, who's too old and who isn't, who loves tacos, and just talk about what bonds us. And what bonds us is the love of sprint car racing, but – the love of people like Murph. That's what bonds you and I, you know? It's why you and I have been mates for as long as we have is people. Absolutely. And I, shit, I, I mean, I'm telling you what, I can't even remember a time in my life not knowing you, Wade. I mean, it's been that long. And, um, you know, we all love this sport. And, 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 you know, guys like Murph, you won't find anyone that doesn't like him as a person. I mean, he's just mm -hmm. as good as they come as a human being. And, you know, he's just uh, 
he's a special guy. He's somebody that I truly love and he, he's uh, very important to me in my life. And, uh, you know, just, it's awesome to be able to honor him. I, I hope the race is a success. You know, I know that the first race got canceled and, and, uh, you know, with it only being one night this year, I expect it to be, you know, really intense because, you know, there is no warm up. you know, you're going right into the main show. There's no 360. It's, you're there for battle. And, uh, you know, right now, I mean, I would have to say that Colmacito is the guy to beat. He's won the first two NARC events, started off very strong. He was strong with the high limit series early in the year. So, um, you know, if I have to, if I have to put a target on someone's back, that's probably the guy that I think is going to be the yeah. tough one to beat right now. Um, and then you're going to look at Justin Sanders, who in my opinion has probably been the fastest guy throughout California over the last five or seven years, time in and time out. And then, uh, you know, you, you got to beat Shane Galvik as well. So, to me, those three guys are going to be the toughest. And, uh, you know, Tim and I are going to do whatever it takes to beat those guys. Uh, please remind me of your dad because, my God, what a fantastic character. One of my favorite people on the planet. A guy that just, to me, I wish we had more characters like that in our sport. But then when your dad was doing his racing and force with his, as a, a king in his game, People didn't hate people so much just for being themselves. It was a different time. I kind of wish we had more of that now, mate. I couldn't agree more. You know, I um, I, I have to laugh. You know, I'm sure everybody everybody in the racing world right now is seeing the, the little banter back and forth between Jacob Allen and my brother. And um, I guess I just find it, you know, I find it different than most people do. You know, I think that, uh, you know, everybody, you know, being honest, everybody's so soft now and so politically correct. It, it's uh, it's it's not that deep, you know, people, uh, people don't realize that these guys are racing with each other every week. And you know, even when there's banter back and forth, I think the fans sometimes get more emotionally invested than what the people that are involved are doing it. And, um, you know, these, at the end of the day, all these guys are professionals and, you know, even if you don't like a guy that much or whatever, you know, there's no hatred in the pit area. Um, there's no, uh, um, I don't know. I, I think the fans honestly make it out to be bigger than what it is. And I wish they wouldn't because, at the end of the day, you know, we all put our pants on the same as anyone else. And uh, we all go through things and we all have uh, our own demons and our own battles that we're fighting every day. And, yeah. um, you know, just because people drive sprint cars a little bit faster than others doesn't mean that, uh, you know, they're any different than the guy sitting in the stands. So um, I wish, you know, as a community that we would be able to go back to those times where, yeah. you know, maybe we all weren't so tender. You know, I think that, uh, you know, to, to succeed in life, you have to have a uh, very thick skin and, um, yeah, I don't know. Guys like my dad are very hard to, very hard to come by anymore. There's, they're, they're, they're honestly, unfortunately, they're dying off every day. And, yeah. um, you know, the the kind of man that my dad is, I'm nowhere near, you know, how incredible he is. And, um, you know, I just hope that, uh, I hope that that, you know, being able to watch all the guys that I watched growing up, like John Forrest and my dad, and you know, all these guys that never pulled punches, I'm glad to be somewhat like them. And and I wish there was more like us that, uh, you know, we, we're gonna, we're not gonna dance around your feelings. Absolutely. This Saturday, King Speedway Hanford, Budweiser, the king of beers. I love you, man. Isn't that what the old Bud Light had back in the day? Uh, Peter Murphy Classic. It's going to be a belter. Let's hope that the weather plays the game. I know that Murph's got his heart and soul invested in this. Dom, it's always good to catch up with you, mate. Please say hi to your beautiful family for me. Good luck on the weekend. I hope everything is okay on two different levels for you. And uh, kick some ass and have a taco for me if you win, all right? Thank you, mate. Take care of yourself down there. Good to see you, Dom. Dominic Selzy, one of the big stars for the Peter Murphy Classic at racekingspeedway.com if you want to check out more information about it. The idea of Tim Cating and Dom sumo wrestling in a pair of thongs at the end of it. I just hope it means that the flip-flops. Yay. <laughs> Yikes. I don't even know I went down that. Why did I go down that path? I'm turning this video off now. <laughs> see you, Dom. See you.